What if somebody needed to make a decision for you? What if you needed somebody to take an action for you, but you couldn't do it? Who's going to be in charge? Who can make those decisions for you? Hi, I'm John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law, where we help our clients leave no unfinished business. Now, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer. Today, we'll be exploring how you can set up the right people to make decisions for you if you can't make those decisions or take those actions on your own behalf. Now, this involves speeding up things. How can we avoid potential delays? We want to think about what could go wrong and how can we speed things up so people aren't left waiting for you. When we think about making decisions, there are really going to be three different time periods when somebody could make a decision for you. First, what happens if you're alive and you have capacity? You can take all the actions for yourself. Next, what happens if you're still alive, but no longer mentally capable of making your own decisions or taking actions on your behalf? Finally, what happens after you're gone? Who's going to be in charge? Who will be making decisions about your stuff when you're gone? So the easy situation first, you're alive and you can make all your own decisions. If you're alive and can make your own decisions, there are really only two people who could take actions for you. The first will be an agent under your financial power of attorney, and the second would be a trustee under any trusts created for you or by you. Your financial agent will be able to take actions on your behalf based on the power of attorney that you've signed granting them that authority. Your agent's powers are limited to what you've given them in the power of attorney that you signed on their behalf. If you've set up a revocable management trust, then the trustee will only be able to take action on behalf of assets that have been funded into that trust. They won't necessarily have the ability to go and collect any assets. Now, this is where you may have a power of attorney that authorizes your agent to fund assets into a management trust, which would allow those assets to get into the trust. If you have the capacity, the better plan is to make sure that you've done it yourself so that the trustee doesn't have to go and take those actions and collect those assets on your behalf. Well, what happens if you've lost capacity? Well, if you've lost capacity, we're looking at expanding who can take action on your behalf. We've already talked about a trustee. We've talked about an agent under a financial power of attorney. But the other two people we'll want to think about are your agent under a medical power of attorney and a potential guardian being appointed. Now, your agent under your medical power of attorney can only take action and make medical decisions for you if you have lost capacity. So if you're out riding your bike and break your ankle, your medical agent can't step in because you still have the ability to make medical decisions for yourself. It's only once you're in a coma or you can't make those decisions yourself that a medical agent would step in. But what happens if your agents under either your financial power of attorney or under your medical power of attorney don't have enough authority or you're giving them conflicting instructions? This is where we may have to start looking at a guardianship. Guardianship is a much more invasive process because we're going to have to go to the local probate court and get a guardian appointed for you. This means that we're taking your rights away and giving them to your guardian. The guardian is then responsible for the decisions that you make and is accountable to the probate court. Obviously, when it comes to naming folks, you're going to want to make sure that you're naming the right people. So whether it's your declarations of guardian or your powers of attorney, make sure you're putting the right people on the team. If you don't trust them now to make the right decisions, would you really trust them to make good decisions for you later? After you've passed, we want to think about the people you're naming as executor and potentially as trustee to take actions on your behalf. What we're doing, again, is setting up the people who are going to be in charge of your stuff. Your executor or potentially your administrator will be named in your last will or a trust agreement. These folks will be responsible for collecting any remaining assets, paying off your final debts, and then distributing your assets as you have directed in your last will or a trust agreement. When we think about the folks who are in charge to make decisions for you, either now or in the future, really we're trying to avoid the frustration and delays that can come from not knowing who's in charge. But it's not enough to just name these folks. Whether it's a guardian, an agent, or your executor, you want to make sure that you've let the people know who are going to be in charge that you've named them to be in charge. By letting them know now, it speeds things up later so that when they get the message that something's happened to you, they know that they are the ones who are going to be in charge. As a side benefit, you may also surface some potential fights that may be brewing. 
If you've got two children and one of them wants to be in charge and the other is going to be upset if they're not in charge, letting them know now who's going to be in charge will help identify a potential problem. If there's going to be a fight, you'd much rather know now while you're still able to address the issue that there's going to be a problem. There are lots of options, and if you haven't set out who's in charge, you're really not only creating frustration and delay for your family, but you're opening the door for additional costs and additional fights as your family fights over who is in charge. Remember, by setting out who's in charge, you can make it a lot easier for your family to have less unfinished business for them to clean up later. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got other questions about this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.